Hi. Okay, we're going to the Indian Ocean. We've read all the books. We've got all the beans, mince, potatoes, lasagna, and a freezer full, a couple of fridges full, and enough in the bilges to slow us down and last us for at least six months because it's a well-known fact that people in the Maldives do not eat. We've tested the VHF, the satellite communications, and the SSB, and they all work. Reback. Drop down the bottom of Sri Lanka to avoid the wind shadow. Check in the top of the Maldives. Down through the Maldives, Chagos, and then sweep south in a bit of a banana to get to the Seychelles. Okay. So we're likely to spend a while in the Seychelles, maybe three months, uh, assuming we are allowed in. And then ideally we could go down to Madagascar or the Comoros Islands, uh, but right now they're locked down, as is South Africa. So it's a bit of a gamble, but we're hoping that by the time we get here in August, September, October time, everything is open. So... What else have we got to do? I've been up the mast for a rig check and everything is looking good. We've changed the oil in the engine room, checked out the coolant, checked everything there is to check, changed the water seals on the raw water pump. The dinghy's fine, the solar panels have been polished, the deck's been cleaned up because this is where we're going to be getting a lot of our water in the squalls along the roof through the gutter, down the hose, and into the tanks. we got to get out a whole bunch of this string and put it in the right places, and that always takes a little while. And then we've got, hiding down there, beautifully dry, is the how we're going to get this down, uh, otherwise known as a spinnaker. And uh, that'll be doing some duty, I think, in the months to come because there's not going to be a lot of wind and then it'll be blowing like stink uh, in the squalls. That's our new code zero which is yet to see the light of day. Smiling Buffalo has been our haunt for the last oh six or seven months since it opened again with the friendly serving staff. This is our last day, we're leaving for South Africa. Bye. 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 We miss you guys. Bye. See you on YouTube. <laughs>2021, our first morning and up at the crack of quarter to nine, <laughs> a bit late, and heading off now. A few jobs to do, we're going to get the code zero down, code D up, and then we will set sail. <laughs> okay, this is a code zero is down on the deck in this bag, and the code whatever the other code is <laughs> it's going up the big baggy one as Don described it and finally we got away heading off for our first night at sea in over 12 months heading into the setting sun for the end of the first day at sea looking very pleasant right now and the forecast is that this goes all the way to Sri Lanka so bring it on and ironically, 
10 minutes ago I was sitting writing a blog about bad weather in Scotland in the summer. Oh well, you can't have it all. Yes, the sun says it will flatten the sea, but there goes our surfing moment. Now one of the beauty of catamaran sailing, as well as being flat, is that you can just retire to the patio and let it all unfold and steer from Captain Kirk's interior position. Still blowing 28, 29 knots as we pass the Nicobar Islands just skirting the 12 mile zone in case the Indian Navy come looking for us. 10 knots in 20 to 25 knots of breeze. We stripped the blades off the Watton Sea and changed it to the 12 knot prop but then of course you sail along at 8, 9, 10 and then catch a wave and whoosh you're at 16 and off go your blades. On goes another prop and makes Watton Sea quite rich. One thing we've waited for for over a year is clear, clean water. At last. It's just a shame Titanic is playing in the background. Half the time these grub files are more artist's impression than weather forecasting. But every time we fall for it, 10 to 15 knots it says, but invariably ends up enough to blow off my toupee. In my head I've got this image of 10 year olds sitting at their dad's laptop during online classes armed with a set of colouring pencils creating these masterpieces. The thing is I hadn't probably thought this through. I wanted to follow the most colourful lines, like the green one, but I didn't want to be too close to Sri Lanka. This of course took us north of the shipping channel and we ended up blundering across the shipping lanes like an old man ambling across a multi-lane freeway at rush hour. Yeah, we made it, so live to tell the tale. And in the immortal words of Cat Stevens, morning has broken. Anne's not dead, just knackered. It was a tough night, but come the dawn, the sun's amber glow suffused the cabin with its strange, eerie light. Right in me bleeding eyes, wakening me up. On the other hand, Anne can sleep through absolutely anything. The days wore on and we wore out. Good fun. This is a view out the fishing hatch. Halfway through one of the nights when it was all a bit wild, I spotted a trickle of water running out of them. I can tell you that was a clean pants moment. These Goyo hatches have a history of the glass falling out so it was a wee bit worrying I can tell you. The numbers for today, day 8, we did 308 knots per mile, an average speed of 8.7 knots, maximum speed of 12.4 Firstly, yes, I did dress myself that morning and make no apologies for it. I thought it was quite a good look. However, I did look up the mainsail and found one of our battens was poking out its pocket. So we had to down sails and get it fixed. I am a genius. Getting near the end. The end of the trip and the end of our tether, but it was the last morning and everything was looking good. So cruising on down broad reach, it was really blistering sailing, very nice. However, I've said before the movement on a cat is a bit like one of these circus clown cars where each of the four wheels at the corners are on eccentric axles and you get this weird four directional wobble. But you get used to it, and it's not enough to throw your drinks on the table, far from it. 
and wearing massive clown shoes also helps your balance. Nothing in the galley moves, especially the skipper. I've discovered a great new feature on the Max C system, which I don't really like, but this is brilliant. If it's all a bit sporty outside and you don't fancy taking in a reef, all you need to do is grab your mouse and slide this up and look, the wind eases off. Brilliant! Yeah, if only. Now we're trash talking. How to stop filling up the bilges with plastic sacks of rubbish? Get tendonitis chopping the rubbish into tiny pieces and stuff them in a bottle. Works beautifully. That's a week's worth of plastic yogurt pots and rubbish in there already. And as night falls on Time Bandit. And come the dawn, we save a pound or two on diesel by tacking into the anchorage. Pick a blue patch to anchor in. Goes from 20 metres to 1 metre quite noisily. Gingerly, we pick our way in through the reef. <laughs> and we've got this nice little spot, nice and blue. This is Uligan, the most northern of the Maldives chain, which extends for about 450 miles south of here. Between here and there are some of the world's most luxurious vacation resorts. But as you're not allowed to anchor off these islands, just in case you tarnish their customers' million dollar views with the sight of your undies and the guardrail, I doubt we're going to be stopping at these islands. And the islands where folk actually live were not allowed ashore, at least we don't think so right now and not without having those q-tips stuck up your nose to test you for covid so I think we're going to be restricted to uninhabited islands just as the palm trees and the birds but at least there's no bronzed beach bullies to kick sand in my face or knock over my sand pies What, you want it there? There! Okay, that looks blue enough Welcome to the Maldives! <laughs> the swimming pool is now formally open. We hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below and give us a big thumbs up. No idea why, but YouTube says it works. Thanks for watching!